The Apple Watch Ultra is something I never really saw myself buying because of the price of the watch, but um, I decided to eventually buy one in the end because of the battery life and the build quality. So there are gonna be 20 things in this video on how I use my Apple Ultra Watch every single day. Now, one thing I do use every single day on the Apple Watch Ultra has been the alarm clock. And that's been such a revelation compared to all the other fitness trackers I've tried over the years that wake you up like really suddenly. The haptic motors on the back of the Apple Watch really kind of gently wake you up. And also because they're just gently tapping on your, on your wrist, it doesn't wake up anybody else who might be in the same room as you. Now, firstly, it goes into this sleep mode, which dims the screen and locks itself to avoid any accidental presses. and you know, whilst you're in bed, but it also tracks your various stages of sleep state, your time awake, your time in REM, your time of deep sleep, all shown on your Apple Watch. Sleep tracking is something that many smartwatches can monitor, but honestly, the Apple Watch Ultra has been the first watch that I've actually been able to sleep with and keep on overnight. And the Apple Watch Ultra has been the first watch, just given the battery life, that can actually get me through a night. And actually, the Ultra can get me through a night, a day, another night, another day, and I think maybe even another night and another day, because I always struggle to find that that window with any other smartwatches of, you know, you, you sleep with it overnight, now you've got to charge it somehow in the morning whilst you're getting ready, and then you've got to put it back on again, do your day, sleep with it, and then you've got, it's just that window in the morning of trying to find a time to charge it. I can never do it because I'm very much, uh, you know, when I'm awake in the morning, I get up and I go out. So there is no time to charge during the day unless I was to charge it at my desk. And then I'd probably leave the watch on my desk instead. So it's just finding the gap and the Apple Watch Ultra just doesn't have those issues whatsoever. Of course, one of the things the Apple Watch Ultra does for me is it allows me easy access into my Apple computer. So things like my MacBook Air and particularly my Mac Studio because it doesn't have things like Touch ID or Face ID to easily get in. So having the Mac know that my Apple Watch is near and close by and so quickly unlocks my machine for me can be a really, really great feature of the Apple Watch Ultra. It can also be used to unlock my chosen password manager. So rather than have to type in this long and complicated master password, I can just double tap my watch and it will unlock my password manager on my computer. Okay, let's talk around the house now. Now, my kids are a little bit older. They don't really need baby monitors or anything anymore, but we did still want to know when they were out of their bed. You know, when I was a lot younger, I would just go and sit on the top stairs on the landing. I don't know if you did that yourself, but, um, but yeah, so we decided to get a ring camera and it's been so useful to have the notification on our watch when someone does get out of bed, whether they're just wandering out of their bedroom at night, maybe they um, go sit on the top step or something, or maybe they're just sleepwalking. It's just good to know, get the notification. Now I actually live in this keyless, fobless world. I don't carry any keys with me at all. I don't carry car keys. I don't carry a front door key at all. So using my Apple Watch Ultra, I can set, use shortcuts on there from my various home automation apps and do things like opening the garage door to get my car out or obviously letting the kids get their bikes and things so they can go play on the streets. And uh, yeah, it's been quite refreshing to not be carrying around keys, just you know, jangling in your pockets, scratching your phone. So just one more thing to forget or leave behind you. Now, in terms of actually driving, my Apple Watch Ultra has had an update on the uh, one of the apps that I use, and that allows the app to directly connect to my car via Bluetooth. So I can actually open my car, get in and drive my car with just my watch now without having to worry about whether I've got you know any phone reception, whether I'll be able to actually unlock my phone over the air if I park it in a garage or underground car park somewhere. Uh, not sure how I'm gonna get in this. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> now I do also have a ton of other like home automation stuff through Home Assistant, which I have on my watch. And that allows me to do things around the house like turning lights on or off, opening and closing doors, locking and unlocking doors as well. And you might say, Pete, it's just as easy to go and turn on the light switch with your finger. And I would say yes, but when it is 2 a.m. in the morning, it's freezing cold outside of bed, and one of the kids wants to go to the bathroom, then it's much, much nicer to tell my Apple Watch to go and turn the last light on in the bathroom than it is to get out. So yeah. Fitness is another thing I've been really using on my Apple Watch Ultra. Now, last year I discovered an app called Strong for the Apple Watch, and I've been able to use Strong to absolutely kind of track my workouts. I can basically set up my whole workout ahead of time. And with the Apple Watch, I can set my weights, the number of reps I need to do, and the watch will take me through each of those like step by step. It's so, so easy to do. And also because I'm using my watch to track my workouts, it really nicely fits in with my health insurance with Vitality, where essentially as long as I do five 30 minute workouts every single week, then I'll get kind of benefits from like a free Apple Watch, free Amazon Prime subscription, tons of discounts on tech and shoes and clothes and all sorts as well. So that really, really works. And, and basically by using this strong app, I'm now managing to work my way up through my weights and through my reps and hopefully Hopefully by the end of this year, I'm gonna actually be able to reach my kind of fitness goals for the year, hopefully. But typically whilst working out, I will pop in a pair of headphones and listen to you know, Spotify or 
Apple Music or uh, maybe even Harry and Meghan's latest book, which is a bit of an eye-opener. But you can, of course, pair some Bluetooth headphones directly with the Apple Watch. So you can go on runs, you can do anything you want exercise-wise and not have to carry around a phone with you, which has been a bit of a revelation because you don't have to carry around this heavy thing with you constantly whilst you're exercising. Not only do I not carry around any keys with me anymore, I also haven't used a wallet in years. So I choose to use Apple Pay on my Apple Watch Ultra wherever I go. And there are a couple of things here to know to uh, make your Apple Pay experience much, much better. So in terms of using the watch, there is an app called StowCard where you can essentially load on all your store cards and apps like, you know, Subway or um, Starbucks cards and those kind of things. So you just launch the app. It gives you a barcode on the screen so you can then kind of beat this against their scanners and then you get all your discounts or, you know, collect your points or whatever it is for those kind of apps. Now, the second app is an app called Curve. And essentially what you do with Curve is you load all of your other cards into the app, into the kind of Curve app, and then you'll get a either a virtual card or you actually get a physical card as well, which Curve sends out to you and you use that card to pay for everything. Now, what happens behind the scenes is that you can actually choose which card you want to kind of use virtually behind the scenes of that one physical card. And also has a few extra benefits of you get to collect cashback points for every time you spend on that card. And also there's a um, an anti-embarrassment mode. So more for, I guess, people when they're out on their first dates and you go to pay for a meal and your card's declined. Well, rather than your card actually being declined, it will immediately behind the scenes in Curve, just go and charge a different card that you've got set up as like a backup payment. So anti-embarrassment mode stops you being embarrassed when I guess your date sees you haven't got any money in your account. <laughs> Oh, and there's also one really, really good feature of Curve that I've used a few too many times, unfortunately. But basically, if you go and pay on the wrong card and you decide after you go, oh, I wish I should have put that on my credit card instead. Well, you can actually go into the app in Curve and then change it to go onto your credit card for the payment that you've already made. So it will give you a refund on your original card and then charge it to your secondary card. It's a really, really good app. Apple Pay is more secure than a physical card. If you take your watch off, then it's going to lock your watch so you can't actually do anything and you need to type in your pin code to actually get it to unlock again. So I feel that it's safer to wear an Apple Watch and pay using Apple Pay than it is using a traditional debit, credit card, or cash. Okay, so this is one of the more James Bond-esque features on the Apple Watch, and that is the walkie-talkie feature. And it works just like a walkie-talkie. You tap and hold and speak into your watch, and then you wait for their response. Hey, can you grab the coats for me, please? Sure, no problem. Oh, and it works just as well being in the same room or the next room as it does with someone being on the other side of the world. It is that good. This feature, I think, absolutely tops all of the other features I actually use daily. Just swipe up from the bottom and tap on the phone icon to have your phone play a pretty loud sound. So you can figure out where you left it. Great for when your phone falls down the side of the sofa. One of the lesser known and probably lesser used features on the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch Ultra are the focus modes. Now, I use this constantly every single week when I go to the gym and it can see from my location that I'm at the gym and it will actually change my watch face to a fitness watch face that I've got set up, which gives me easy access to all of my kind of fitness apps. I can see the battery life of my watch. I can get to my strong workout app very, very easily. I can start a workout. I can get to my music, see my heart rate, all of those kind of essential things that I need when I'm actually at the gym. And you can also extend this to, you know, if you've got a, a work focus mode where you want to have certain things set up on your watch to be able to get to them easily, maybe a family mode as well. So when you're kind of with your family and your kids, then you have more kind of family based apps. Something else you can control with focus states is the ability to control notifications. So things like your calendars, your reminders, or your app notifications as well. Now I do tend to disable a lot of these notifications just so I don't get swamped with, you know, text messages and social media notifications and all the wave of notifications you normally get through your mobile phone. But with things like being able to check your text messages or notifications from around the house and particularly my automation within uh, Home Assistant where I can find out what's going on around my house, it's really handy to have that directly on my Apple Watch. Now you can, of course, use the watch to receive phone calls, which is something I do quite sparingly nowadays, but actually my original decision to buy an Apple Watch was based on the fact that if I missed a phone call, then it could be worth, you know, it could be a new customer or an existing customer that was phoning me. So therefore I bought the Apple Watch so that I didn't miss phone call ever again and now I very very rarely take phone calls at all. <laughs> now Siri may not be the best voice assistant but it does come in handy where it's been designed where you don't have to say the trigger word you can just raise your watch up and then say things such as open the garage door. Opening garage door. Turn the boys room blue. I sent the request. Turn the heating up to 21 degrees in the boys room to 21 degrees Celsius. I do find that sending messages with the Apple Watch and using Siri can be quite tricky. You need to be in a very quiet space, but I tend to be able to you know, sit down and I'll just tap on the screen, typically with an emoji response or you know, a thumbs up or something along those lines. But also I have been swimming a few times where the watch has been you know, covered in water and I've been able to very successfully sit on the side of the swimming pool and then you know, tap a response to a message or even record a message because you can send voice notes through the Apple Watch as well. 
And that's been really helpful to be able to send messages to you know, friends or family when I've been kind of, you know, without my phone, just with the watch when I've been, you know, doing something else. Of course, when messages do fail, I will and can revert back to using my Apple Watch to make phone calls. It does actually work very, very well. Hello, Christian, is that any better? Hey, what's up? Is that better? I hear you don't understand roundabouts. We, we looked at this giant, confusing roundabout at Brighton, and we have roundabouts here, but they're all like one way. Um, how does the audio quality sound, by the way? Is it, do, do, do you know that I'm on a watch, or can you tell the difference? Uh, not at all. It sounds really good. But if you do want to take phone calls on your Apple Watch, you can use your headphones. So if you're out for a run or yeah, just don't want to use the kind of James Bond-esque where you hold it up to your wrist and, and speak to your wrist, wrist uh, then you can also use headphones and actually probably have a bit of a better audio quality as well. Now, this is actually one that I've used a few times on the Apple Watch Ultra with the Wayfinder interface where you can tap to find your parked car. So I'm really forgetful sometimes. I actually went to the Netherlands recently, parked my car in the airport car park, and then by the time I'd gone there, by the time I'd come back, I'd completely forgotten where my car was. So I used the complication on the Apple Watch Ultra to then literally it would point me in the direction of my car so I didn't have to wander around aimlessly, you know, up and down all the rows of cars trying to find my car. So that really, really came in clutch. Now, if you do need to keep sensitive information to hand, things like passwords or pin codes for certain doors or gates or something along those lines, then having one password installed locally on your watch can be an absolute lifesaver. All I do on the iPhone app itself is I kind of pre-select which entries I want to carry over onto my watch and be stored locally. And then I can use it when I'm out and about. And it's actually been really, really helpful for me when I've been going back and forth and through. There's some gates that I go through where the pin code changes from time to time and I can't remember it. So having that stored on my watch is a bit of a lifesaver. Overall, I've been really pleased with how capable the Apple Watch Ultra has been and I actually managed to last a full day in London with just using the Apple Watch Ultra with no phone. 